flying off the ceiling, taken by this feeling. Baby, we're invincible. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Notts County, the Looking Forward series. If you're enjoying it so far, drop a like, that'd be dope. Um, yeah, so I thought we'd start on the African Cup of Nations today. Just take a quick gander at this, because there's there's a lot of it. And we're just kind of looking for any real surprises in this save. So Mali winning it is pretty damn dope. Um, Dr. Congo grabbed themselves quite a few of them in the latter stages of this save. That's kind of interesting too. Burkina Faso getting to the final is pretty surprising as well. Guinea doing pretty well in there too. That's Niger. In fact, that's real life. What we're talking about, that actually happened. That's, that's pretty cool as well. But generally speaking, the same kind of teams for the most part. But cool to see that... Um, who was it? We literally just saw them. Burkina Faso getting to a final. That is pretty awesome. So fair play to them on that. Right. We're going to jump straight into the players. Next episode, we'll do like Champions League and Europa League stuff. So that'll be kind of fun as well. So let's jump in and go straight after Sean Lancaster. Now, remember, we had two players that became staff in the last episode. And it looks like we just found ourselves a third one. It's Sean Lancaster. So, okay. Very interesting. So he, wow. So he wasn't even at Palace very long. They didn't spend that much money on him, I think. It was only about £8 million. But for some reason, when they become staff, it tends to remove the transfer fees from their thingy here, which is kind of annoying. Um, so you can see that, I mean, management-wise, was with Blackpool. Uh, Bruce Bell in charge of Bristol Rovers, although it doesn't seem like he achieved a great deal as a manager, considering he retired at the age of 48. Never made an appearance for England. 56 for us. The, the real bulk of his career seems to have come in Turkey, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Fenerbahce. I mean, 10 goals in 31 appearances for them is very decent. Uh, frankly, like... Some solid numbers. Went to Freiburg eventually to finish things off, which is very strange. Um, but there was no intention of leaving the game he loved. So let's just check his staff history out then. So he was the manager of Bristol Rovers for a little bit um, and manager of Blackpool. We don't really know much about that. I mean, what we do know is that he didn't win anything with either of the two teams or do anything worthy of note. But nevertheless, it was nice that the guy actually did go into management. Not only that, but the fact that he managed Bristol Rovers, I really do enjoy just because, I mean, come on, that's the team that, Bristol, uh, that Regan Booty left us to join. I really hope that Regan Booty's done something interesting with his career in this save. Because I know that it was a coach at Notts County. Imagine if he became the manager. It's just, I want someone to manage Notts County. It can happen, I promise. But let's now go look at Ian Saunders. I think I already checked this guy when I was, before it even happened. And I think he retired, yeah, he retired at 24. This is what I'm talking about. When a player that has solid options, like he was decent enough to play for Wimbledon in like League One and League Two, right? So why on earth would he retire when he was released by Notts County? Sucks, but that's just life sometimes. So Ian Saunders retired at the age of 24. Then we've got Nico Williams, who actually got 31 caps for Wales in the end. At the age of 34, he retired. He went to Hull City after he was with us. He was only with us for like four years. But again, like a lot of players in this save, he's found a nice home in Chicago for the latter part of his career. Joined him for 900k and made nearly 200 appearances. Uh, over seven years, which is not bad. I've got to be honest. It's it's solid numbers of appearances. Like, he's never going to score a ton of goals. Although he did get four in his final year, which is pretty damn solid for the guy. Retired at the age of 34. That's generally speaking how they go. Usually you don't see players go past 37. Occasionally you'll see a 38, perhaps on a goalkeeper. But usually it's about 34, particularly for fullbacks. Next up, Armando Senya. You might remember him as that uh, Albanian guy we had for a bit. I want to see how his career went. Retired at the age of 34. Okay, so he did actually have a bit of a career after he left us. I was concerned that he may not do. Went to Charlton. I think that was on a permanent deal. Uh, he cost us four four thousand pounds, which is crazy. Oh no, he went alone to Charlton. Then eventually joined um, Osasuna. Made 55 appearances for them, and then he joined. Wait. Yeah, he joined Espanyol, which is not bad for 1.6 million. 66 appearances there. Then he joined Saint Etienne for £2 million. Like, he was a kind of journeyman player that was just going from club to club, country to country for relatively small transfer fees. And then again, ended up going on loan to Brentford for a little bit before finally going over to America yet again, Philadelphia Union, and somehow found himself playing for Bethlehem, uh, which I'm guessing is probably like a feeder club of Philadelphia, perhaps? Um, it would certainly have seen that way. I think they're like their B team because of the way the American league system works. So he won actually won the championship with Brentford in 2038. So that's kind of cool on loan there. But nevertheless, he still did it, you know? Not too bad from Armando Senia. And still got 44 caps for Albania and four goals. This was a relatively straightforward one. Uh, the guy retired after he left. Again, I'm not entirely sure that one makes that much sense. But there you go. I mean, this guy, he, we, we released him when we were in the championship. And you're telling me that he wasn't good enough for anyone else in this league? I don't know. Uh, like, surely a conference side or a National League side would have picked him up, but apparently not. Retired at the age of 24. He did have some injuries, though, so maybe that was what did it, but I don't know. It still sucks for him. Okay, now we're into the big leagues. It's Marvin Suarez. What do we have? 38. Right, this is more like it. Oh, wow, he left. Oh, and he left in the bloody summer. 
what the hell? This, that sucks because he would never have left on his own accord. Never once did he ever argue about leaving the club. Anytime I got a bid from another team, he would always say, I, my client has no interest in talking to the club. 167 caps for Colombia. But that is uber disappointing. How much did they pay him? £57 million. That's garbage. We had bids of nearly 100 from Atleti. Um, won the Champions League with Real Madrid. But that's also to join one of our arch rivals in Real Madrid is just gut-wrenching. Um, but my God, look at his look at his goal conceded record at Real Madrid. Only 38 goals conceded in 64 games. I mean, that, that is ridiculously good, I've got to say. But I love that he started Dragon Force. It's crazy that he had... Like, he was with us for eight years. But he was also with Sheffield United for six years before that and still made a lot of appearances for them. So 572 games in his entire career. Retired at the age of 38 is not bad. Um, joined Villarreal for free, it would seem. It's just a bit gut-wrenching to lose a guy like this. It's like the board actually deliberately chose to sell him, it would seem. And who the hell did we replace him with? He felt like he was going to be one of those Notts County through-and-through through players. I, if you would have given me the options of, like, who's going to leave first season, like, the moment I leave, I would not have had Marvin Suarez down. Sandoval would have made a little bit of sense, but Marvin Suarez went, made no sense to me to leave at that point. But I guess it's just new manager didn't like him. Maybe that's why he was staying, because of me. He just love me. Just love me, man. So that is a real shame. But next up, you're going to love this. It's Regan Booty. It's Regan Booty. Come on, Regan. We know he's a manager, so this could work. Let me actually retire at the age of 38 as staff. Uh... Okay, no, um, definitely not. Although, this is weird, right? So, Regan Booty, career stats, we obviously know all about that. What we're more interested in is kind of milestones. So, he was a manager at Bristol City and got them relic. What, really? Wow, he was doing really well with them at first. No wonder he got sacked. <laughs> when he took over, they were doing fine. I actually saw them win a lot of games and get nearly in the playoffs. And then he got them relegated. Okay, I understand the sacking now. Came to Notts County, was a coach at County for five years before moving to Chelsea. Um, and to be fair, he's been a Chelsea coach now for six uh, for 18 years. He's okay, isn't he? I just wish he'd done a little bit more. I would have liked to have seen the guy go and manage somewhere, you know? Um, like, he tried the management thing with Bristol Rovers. And the fact that he left us to go to Chelsea... And then I mean, he's had, at least he showed some loyalty to Chelsea, but like you think he'd have more loyalty for Notts County, really, wouldn't you? I guess it's the blue kit, isn't it? It's just Regan, mate. We got to talk. That's just it. It deeply saddens me the way things have gone with Regan Booty. He's sixty years old. He, he's looking. He's had a good like. He's he's got that moisturizer on his face a decent amount. I'd have to say. Right. That's. I was hoping we could do more on that, but that just seems to be the way that it is. Next up, Dario Santana. Retired at the age of 36. Okay, so a little bit old, which is actually not bad for a winger, to be fair. Uh, played all. Hang on, he played for Manchester City. <laughs> where did this come from so i mean the guy was clearly decent like we sold him to burnley for an insane amount of money and he did play there for quite some time and not a bad goal record city just by the weirdest players they spent 59 million on dario santana i i don't know i don't know what to say to that to be honest that's actually quite surprising but there you go then eventually they sold it to southampton because they realized their mistake for 39 million pounds and he played all right for southampton that's a good record to be honest. Same amount of goals as he got for Burnley, but in a much less time. So that's not bad. And then he joined Wolves for £17 million. Good God. The amount of transfer fees this guy's racked up over his career. Um, then he joined Torino, but never actually made an appearance for them in his entire career for the club. Still, he won the Europa Conference League with Manchester City. Well, GG, buddy. Um, yeah, I did not have him down as someone that was going to move to Manchester City in this save, to be honest. I felt like he would go to Burnley for a bit and then just sort of slowly work his way down again. But he had like a second wind of a career, really, um, after going to Manchester City and buggering it up. The Southampton part of his career seems to be like probably when he was at his strongest, which would have been when he was sort of like 28, 32. So actually, yeah, kind of his peak years, I guess that makes sense. He spent them at Southampton. Next up, it's Lee Lee. There is a surprising number of players called Lee Lee in this database, which is a little bit on the concerning side. So obviously, this is nice. This is a guy who I genuinely thought would have followed the same kind of path as Ian Saunders, i.e. just retired. But that was not the case. So he went to Crew for a little bit. Uh, and Charlton, and Peterborough, and Sheffield Wednesday, and Reading, and Mansfield, nice nearby club, and Birmingham. Like, he's just basically gone around the leagues. Um, I don't know if he's actually won much. He won League One with Notts County, and with Birmingham City, uh, 13 years later. And he also won the stupid trophy no one cares about uh, with Sheffield Wednesday. So I guess he's got that to his name. I don't think there's anything else in here that's particularly interesting. Uh, oh, promote the won the playoff final. Okay, so we got to the championship with Mansfield as well in 2034 which is actually the season we left. So that's cool. He was playing for Mansfield when we finished the save. And yeah, seems to have finished off his career at Birmingham City. So there you go. That's what. That's how that happened. Then we got Sancho Hansen. I mean, one of the most useless players we've ever had on a save. I've got to be honest. Uh, went to Angers, then somehow came back to Brighton uh, in the end. 
did okay for Brighton, I guess. Scored a few goals, to be, to be fair. Then actually probably did even better at Stad Rene, uh, which is quite surprising, to be honest. 5.5 million pounds as well he cost them, uh, which is, I think he cost us more than I'd like to admit, to be honest. Uh, then went over to Brussels to, not Brussels, to, um, oh yeah, yeah, Anderlecht. Um, didn't really do that well for them there. Only things he won were with us. So, oh, he was somehow top goal scorer in the French youth into, yeah, and then retired at the age of 34. One of the real players as well. Then Dara O'Shea, a really sad time that he retired when he left us, which again, surprises me because we were in the championship at the time, I think. But that's just how Dara O'Shea's career went, really. Um, a bit of a shame. He did some loan spells, but after he left, he just sort of plummeted. He's one of those players that is just, he's never going to go the whole way with you. And it's a shame, but not much more we can really say. Right, now onto one that was at the club. Nikolai Esperson. Please still be there or at least have done a decent amount for them. I want some of the guys that were there when we left to have like, done a decent chunk for him. Like Joe Noland. Really nice to see. Uh, Darren Lever, I think, did us an okay amount at Notts County as well. Um, but Joe Nolan's the only one that's really stood out to me so far. Nikolai Jesperson. Wouldn't you know it, left Notts County. Did the whole squad just leave in the summer? Good God. 90 caps for Denmark. Retired at the age of 36. Um, so, yeah, he won the Premier League four times, of course, with us. The Champions League, Carabao Cup. But then left to go to Celtic for £13 million. Now, this one doesn't surprise me as much because, again, he was sort of being phased out at that point by me anyway because we had players that were ahead of him in the system. So I guess this one isn't the end of the world. Then joined Blackburn Rovers, scored a couple of goals there. Spent time on loan over at Alhus over in uh, Denmark. So that's pretty cool as well, going back to his home nation. So he still won a decent amount of things, but basically everything he won was with us. Uh, apart from the FA Cup. Wait, he won the FA Cup with Leeds? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Of course. Didn't that screw someone out of a European place at one point? So he still had a decent career after he left us, but it sort of wound down a little bit, presumably playing in lower and lower leagues until he actually never actually made an appearance for Aarhus. So there you go. There's Nikolai Jesperson. Let's go check out Dropkick McPhee. Retired at the age of 34. Never made a Scotland appearance. But what I would say is he's been loyal to the clubs that he's actually been at. Um, like, we sold him to Hearts for 600k, but he did play for them 177 times. So... There is that. And then he joined Motherwell and played for them 168 times. Like, he gave them his all when he was at the club. Finally sort of just finished off his career at Dundee and just couldn't sort of keep things up. The only things he actually won were, again, League One and League Two in Notts County. But uh, the guy just couldn't finish to save his life, which admittedly was a huge issue on that, re that left-hand side anyway, but particularly when it came to the likes of Niall McPhee and others in those positions. Would have been nice to see him get a Scotland call-up. I'm actually kind of surprised he didn't, considering he would have been playing for Hearts and Motherwell in the Scottish Premier League. But there you go. Here we go. Ready? Ooh, okay. He didn't leave us straight away. Dago Ingi Vilbergsen. This is, um. well, we all know, the Icelandic Spaniard. 116 caps for Spain and two goals. So he cost us £70 million, but he did actually at least stay for eight years. Um, no, nine years and eight years after I left. So he wasn't just a, a fair weather friend. To be fair, he didn't really play that much for Real Madrid. So that kind of makes sense. So he must have won a decent amount of stuff. My God, look at what he's won. Um, European Championships defender of the year runner up on two occasions okay i mean from a landmark perspective the guys won virtually everything uh nations league runner up medals world cup winner he was a world cup winner in 2034 so he won the world cup after we won the champions league that same year uh for Notts county good lord look at all this so champions uh cup winners champions again champions again actually there's a lot of premier league titles in here too Champions League runner-up all the way as far as 2041. So I think Notts County have done a solid job. Didn't win anything while he was at Ajax, but it was just a nice way for him to wind down his career, it would seem. So that's Dagger Ingi Vilbergersen. Yeah, I'm glad he didn't just immediately leave because a lot of players seem to have done that. Oh boy. Next up, it's Costel Troffin. This is, um, I'm excited for this. What's the betting he's retired at like 29? Oh, would you believe it? Would you believe it? Oh, okay. Wow. Look at his bastard stats. Costel Troffin, man. What happened? Let's just put this into context for you here. This is a guy who could not finish to save his life, unfortunately. I think his best ever year was probably that year in the championship. And even then, he never really got that much going for him in the end. Uh, did a little bit alone out at FCSB. Came back for us, barely even played. And eventually he left to go to Zenit for a free. And he played there for a while. But even so, still wasn't banging in goals. 10 in 23 is not bad, to be fair. And 13 in 21 is even better, to be fair to him. But then he kind of just drifted. But still, towards the end of his career, he did okay. Was an, went on a free transfer in the end to, uh, to Siska. And just didn't quite do much there. But this is where things take a weird turn. So three years later, he gets, you know, National A license, Continental C license. And his Palace is under 18 coach. But then he moves to Arsenal 
as his under eight as the under 18 coach and i don't know if he actually won anything there yeah he won the under 18 premier league as manager of arsenal or as like the um what the hell not manager of arsenal you know what i mean um but then very briefly was caretaker he, he managed arsenal as the caretaker manager i don't know if i'll actually see anything in here particularly from that but he must have actually managed some games several different times because he's been one of arsenal so he's actually the under 18s manager weirdly that he would take over but he's taken over arsenal three different times now uh, i wonder how many ma clubs manages his matches he's actually managed so he's actually only managed six games in total uh, and he's only won two of them as it goes so perhaps not the best uh, example there i don't know what games he would have managed arsenal in but i don't know if there's anything anywhere we can figure that one out either unfortunately but like this guy is an insanely good coach it actually baffles my mind that he's not managing a side. Like, he would cut... Look at this! He's actually really good. Also, got 57 caps for Romania in the end. Um, when he was playing in Russia, it must have just boosted his career outrageously. But to see him actually manage Arsenal, even as a caretaker manager, and even if it was only for six matches over his career, this guy has still took charge of a big Premier League side. And that's probably the most successful manager we've actually had from the players in this save. And... A lot of people are talking about the idea of Costel Trofin potentially being the manager on the next save. I do. And that kind of gives it a bit of credence, to be honest. The guy's actually got some chops. I've got to be honest. Like, there's a 20 on motivation. He's got great scouting knowledge. He's got excellent coaching attributes for basically everything. Working with youngsters and fitness aren't amazing. But, God, it surprises me that he's not got a better role than he's currently in. Is all I can really say about that. Next up, it's Thomas Pieszczek. He's the kind of guy that I was hoping would stick with us for a little while, and he did not. Oh, God damn it, man. And clearly, he was talented, too. This is my thing. Uh, like, the guy clearly had talent, and I knew about... I, I just... I knew this guy was going to be something. Um, we sold him to Wolves for £38 million. What did he cost us? Like, 10? Nope, 2.7. Fuck, you know. Okay, good profit on that one, at least. Six goals. And then he joined Liverpool for £58 million. There was just something there. And he won the Premier League as well with Liverpool in 2040. And he won the Champions League the same year. And won the Europa League the year before. He won an FA Cup, a Community Shield. And then he joined Real Madrid as well after that. And literally played four times for them after making a £60 million move. And then didn't even play a game for PSV Eindhoven after he joined them. Finally, he went back to Poland and actually got some game time. But this guy's won some shit. Like, 84 caps for Poland and eight goals. Like, he won everything with us and with Liverpool. Uh, although all the stuff he won with us was when I was in charge. Premier League with Liverpool. FA Cup. Charity Shield runner-up. Uh, he won the Europa League. Charity Shield winners. He won the Super Cup. Premier League again. Won the Champions League. And another um, Community Shield runner-up. Yeah, the guy did mad thing. But I'm still... It, it bugs me that he played for not only Liverpool, but also Real Madrid, two of our biggest rivals in the save, and this bastard goes and joins them. Oh, God, where are all the loyalty, lads? Where's the loyalty? Right, next up, Luciano Pinto, a player that we already knew wasn't at the club. So he retired at the age of 36, and he actually did play the rest of his career in China. Uh, the guy must have been earning some insane money, but to be fair, we got the better end of that deal. Um, the fact that they paid us £49 million for this guy is outrageous. I honestly thought that we were never going to get our money back on the, 40, on the 24 mil that we spent from Villa. That was a good deal. Um, but still not that good. So I guess that's all we can really say about my man, Luciano Pinto. He went and played for them for nearly... I mean, maybe he just liked China. Who knows? Right, sorry about that. It took me ages to find Alberto, because unfortunately searching Alberto does not help you. I actually had to look through Notts County's transfer history, which unfortunately meant I saw something about Notts County. And it made me sad. But anyway, we're moving on from that right now. So yeah, he went to Atletico and actually left. He was there when we won the Champions League against him, but he didn't play. Actually came back to England for a little bit. Only for the one season, though. Um... And still, they paid £30 million for the privilege. Then went to Sporting. And then actually finished his season at... Uh, not his season. His career at Les Chauches over in the sort of the lower divisions in Portugal. So still had a, a relatively solid career. But I think we were right to get rid of him when we did. I think we found better players in the end. Uh, I want to see how the likes of Acevedo and Arta Silva actually turned out. So there you go. So here is an interesting one. We've got our man, David Ferguson, who again has turned into a reasonably decent coach over at Spurs this time. So he was at Basel for the longest time in this save. We sold it to them for £4.1 million. And to be fair, he absolutely smashed it in Switzerland for most part of his career. Probably the best part of his career. Eventually moved to one year over at, I think that's Sporting Gijon over in, yeah it is, over in Spain in La Liga. And did, uh, he didn't do great. Got some assists for him. But then went back, in fact, to his home club of Crusaders. And I mean, look at the, what a, look at these. Jesus Christ. Um, those are some numbers, man. Like, for a start, he played 527 games, which is a lot for any player, particularly an outfield player in this save. But more importantly, good Christ. In in 30 matches in the Danske Bank Premiership, he scored 10 times and got 24 assists. 
it, he, he contributed to 34 goals in 30 matches. Like, the season before was like a record-breaking number, and yet somehow he went, no, no, I can better this. And then, after that, he was a coach at Cardiff City, got himself some badges. He was then uh, a coach at Bolton for a little bit, got his badges up even more, was signed as a coach by Crystal Palace, was a coach by Palace for a little bit, got his pro license, and now he's at Spurs. Honestly, feels like one of these saves where, once again, if he was... 151 caps for Northern Ireland as well. If he was to... If the save was to continue, I feel like he and Costel Trofin would definitely be in line for some decent club jobs. Or they might just stay like this for the rest of their lives, like Regan Booty. But they've got mad quality. And it's a shame that he's not actually been a manager at anyone else, really. Um, not even a caretaker manager. But he is still a, a good first-team coach at Spurs. He's done well out of it on that sense. Anyway, right. Last one for the episode is Mamacon Oz, who, once again... Spent a lot of time down at Wellington Phoenix. 117 caps for Armenia, 22 goals, which is very, very bad for a striker. But then he's also playing for Armenia, so I guess we can't fault him too much. So he joined us for 500k, he didn't really play that much. We let him go to Northampton on a free transfer. He had actually moved down under long before the end of the save and then played there for 10 years, 200 games. And to be fair, his goal record is one in four, roughly. A bit, bit better than that. It, it's not brilliant, but it's okay. Um, the man did some solid... I'm sure he's had some okay seasons for them. Like, you got a 12 in 24. That's an all right season. And a 10 in 24. But for the most part, they were pretty bang average. I had one good year for not for Northampton, though, with 14 goals. And obviously, he had great years at Vadoscopia. But that, that's a little bit different. So, that concludes episode two of Looking Forward. Let me show... Oh, there's a lot of green in the next episode, which means it's current players. Uh, red is players that left uh, for transfer fees. Uh, yellow on my thing is players that left on free transfers and then lots of green in the next episode a, an abundance of green uh just to give you a little taste of who we've got coming up in the next video we've got uh hugo fernandez arthur silva ricky griffiths remy dubois aguilar beckart tininio uh stephen walker robbie burton um tons of players like that so that's all coming up in the next episode of looking forward i hope you've enjoyed it if you have drop a like that'd be awesome if you're new to the channel subscribe uh go follow on twitch i stream on tuesdays and thursdays at the moment sometimes on weekends as well as we build up to the new save and all that jazz as well and i'll join you guys very soon as always hold your gun capybara thank you so much for watching Bye bye <laughs>